There's been a lot of news lately about the status of the 80-20 rule. As if tip laws weren't already complicated enough, now something that everybody thought they didn't have to worry about anymore might actually be something that you gotta worry about again. So here is what you need to know about where things stand right now. The 80-20 rule, just to recap for folks who may not be familiar, is the rule that requires employers to pay a full minimum wage to tipped employees for time that they spent performing non-tipped side work that exceeded 20% of their duties on any given shift. So if your tipped employees just did a couple of things here and there on the side, like cleaning menus or prepping garnishes, no problem, as long as it was less than 20% of their daily activities. If it was more than 20%, then you had to pay them at least full minimum wage for that time. Now here's the reasoning behind that law. The law lets employers take a tip credit, meaning that they can pay tipped employees below minimum wage, sometimes as low as $2.13 per hour, with the expectation that the tips that they're going to receive are gonna make up the difference to at least get them to minimum wage per hour and possibly well over over that number. But the caveat with that, of course, is that you have to put those employees in situations where they're likely to receive tips. So in other words, the law doesn't want employers to take a tip credit and pay less than minimum wage and then deny that employee the opportunity to make it up in tips. So that is why it matters what duties a tipped employee who is paid less than minimum wage actually has during the workday. And that is where the 80-20 rule came into play. As as long as their non-tip duties were less than 20%, you were good. Makes sense, right? But here was the problem. As a practical matter, it was almost impossible to keep track of because restaurants don't usually keep precise records of what employees are doing minute by minute. And so it ended up fueling a ton of lawsuits with tipped employees saying that they should have been paid the higher full minimum wage. So in 2018, the Department of Labor issued an opinion letter rescinding the 80-20 rule. And instead of trying to keep track of percentages, the department said that an employer can take a tip credit for any amount of time that a tipped employee performs non-tipped work, as long as, number one, it's related to their tip job, and number two, it's done either at the same time as, or right before, or right after their tipped work. You could go right onto the Occupational Information Network for a list of exactly what work was related to each job, and you didn't have to worry about anything else. Easy. So that's where we were until now. Turns out courts haven't actually been enforcing this rule because they've been disagreeing on whether or not the opinion letter deserves deference. So the Department of Labor has issued, and this is why it's been in the news lately, a proposed regulation that would write this rule into law. So what does this mean for you right now? Well, unfortunately, we're sort of in a little bit of a limbo spot right now. The 80-20 rule is probably gonna be abolished, but right now it's not technically law. It's in the opinion letter from the Department of Labor, it's in the field operations handbook, which some courts defer to, but some courts don't. And so if you don't follow it and you're sued for not following it, you may actually face liability. So until this issue is settled, the safest bet is just to continue to follow the 80-20 rule. Make sure that if you're taking a tip credit that your employees aren't spending more than 20% of their shift doing non-tip side work. And if they do, make sure that you're paying them a full minimum wage for that time.